The world has many waters that can be traveled, and once upon a time, traveling by ship was just about the only way to go from country to country. If they were separated by seas or oceans, of course. And that meant that you had to have a lot of faith in those vessels from point to point. But sometimes they sank, and when they did, they didn't just lose lives, they lost treasure. So from San Jose to the Florida coast, here are 20 biggest sunken treasures ever found. Number 20. San Jose now, you may hear the words sunken treasures and think about how movies embellish certain treasure stories. It might leave you thinking that such treasures don't actually exist. For those of you who have that in mind, I'll tell you about San Jose. Because this was a ship that, when it went down in 1708, had a modern value of $22 billion on board. That's right, $22 billion worth of goods on one ship. You may be thinking, that must have been a really large ship. And you would be right. This was a massive Spanish galleon that took 600 people to operate. And they all went down with it and were lost for 300 years. That was until the vessel and all of its gold were miraculously found. More specifically, the Massachusetts-based Huai, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, were the ones who found the vessel. They found it submerged off of Columbia under 1,800 feet of water. Talk about a deep dive. There's a bit more to the story than you may realize, because while it was found, it would actually be kept a secret for some time for various reasons, not the least of which was that if it were made public too soon that the ship had been found, looters and robbers and pirates would try to get to the gold. As for who does get the gold, that hasn't been determined, yet there's a massive legal battle over the ownership that's going on. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. I'll talk about friends for a second. Because friends, well, they're the reasoning behind a lot of things we do, for better and for worse. And sometimes friends really know how to stick it to you. Except he soon realized that it was a set of fake coins that his friend had set him up with for a big prank. Is it funny? Well, in its own way, probably, but one also has to wonder what kind of revenge the guy got on that friend, because he likely went from a state of elation to a bit of fury pretty quick. Now, let me know what you think about it all in the comments below using the hashtag fancy topic. Number 19. Coastal Treasure it may surprise you to learn that Florida, well, it's not just a place of beauty, Disney, crazy old people, and crocodiles. No, Florida is a place that's honestly famous for having treasure just offshore and even float onto the shore at times. But in this case, I'm talking about how a treasure from an infamous fleet of Spanish ships was particularly discovered literally 300 years after it would sink, and it happened when a group of treasure hunters went off the coast of Florida to find themselves looking for a plethora of gold coins. Now to be fair, it wasn't as valuable as the last entry's massive haul, but getting four and a half million dollars in gold coins, that's a pretty good consolation prize. It was a three-man crew on board the Brisbane boat SV Captiana off of Vero Beach, Florida that found the haul, and even they were amazed at the condition of the coins, even pointing out that some of the gold coins they found couldn't have been put in the water the day before based on how shiny they were. One of the ironies of this this over 350 coin find is that this was just part of the treasure that the Spanish ships had on them. It kind of makes you wonder where the rest of them are. Number 18. The Black Swan Project there have been many odysseys, if you will, that were done to find various treasures in the world, and the Black Swan Project was one of them, as they not only found halls of treasure, but a ship by the name of Nuestra Señora de la Mercedes that capsized during the Battle of Cape Santa Maria was a prime target. Not unlike the previous entry, they did find gold and silver, but there's a twist in this particular tale. 
because they didn't just find a few or even a hundred, they found enough gold and silver coins to weigh up to 17 tons. Now that is a lot of coins, a lot of literal coins. The ship was one of many doomed vessels that the Spanish would try to send from South America to Europe and the British would shoot it down with all of its treasure inside. That made it all the more impressive that the Black Swan Project not only found it but recovered it all. Not without some cost though, because these treasure hunting projects aren't cheap. It would take them over two million dollars to get all of it, but the payoff no doubt would be worth it. Number 17. Nuestra Señora de Atocha now I know that all these ships may sound the same, but the Nuestra Señora de Atocha was a different Spanish vessel that sank with a hoard of treasure on it. In fact, there were truly a lot of Spanish vessels that lost treasure, and it almost makes you feel bad for them because they clearly lost a lot. The story of this ship is honestly one of the more talked about ones due to who ended up finding it. It wasn't just a random person or even a coordinated project, but rather it was found by a legend legendary explorer of the deep sea world in Mel Fisher. The vessel itself was sunk by a hurricane in 1622 and only five men aboard had survived. The shipwreck remained submerged, untouched, and for hundreds of years. That was until Fisher would find it. So what exactly was the haul that was on this vessel? Well, how about a whopping 40 tons of gold and silver and about 70 pounds of Colombian emeralds? And to be clear, these were incredibly valuable emeralds, ones that people drool over and want for themselves. For Fisher though, finding the ship was the result of years of searching and only finding small remnants of the original treasure. He did find it in 1980 and history was made in a good way. Number 16. The Wida Galley now here's some good news, I'm not going to talk about another Spanish ship that went down. I'm going to talk about a pirate ship, in this case the Wida Galley. So what was the Wida Galley? Well honestly it wasn't even supposed to be a pirate ship at first, sadly it was meant to be a slave ship, but it was then hijacked on the first voyage ever for the vessel by the infamous Black Sam Bellamy on its way to Jamaica. This is where things can get very piratey, because as you would suspect, they went and used their newfound vessel to raid all kinds of ships and then get their treasures and move on. After a while they went up to the new world where it's believed that Bellamy's lady was waiting for him. The problem though, by that point in time they were, as legends go, too drunk to sail the ship, so they sailed right into a storm that apparently sunk the vessel. Only two men out of the crew would survive, and the legend stated that the remains of the treasure from 53 other vessels were upon it. It just goes to show you how good of a pirate that Bellamy was. Many would search for the ship over time, but it wasn't until 1984 that it would be located. And there was indeed treasure. Over 200 artifacts had been recovered on that ship in the decades since. Number 15. SS Central America Steamship Today, the transport of precious things like gold is given every expense in order to ensure a safe travel, but in older days that safety could not be guaranteed. That brings us to the SS Central America steamship that over 150 years ago transported about 50 million dollars in gold bars and coins and then mysteriously vanished. Making it one of the greatest lost treasures in US history and making one heck of a legend. Eventually it would be found and the final numbers of what was on that vessel would include 3100 gold coins. 45 gold bars, and more than 80 pounds of gold dust, just from one vessel, which is pretty incredible. The irony, however, does not stop there, as the vessel's contents were eventually put on display in a museum. One of the people who found it was Bob Evans. That's right, like the restaurant. He was the lead scientist on that voyage, and when the gold was getting ready to go on display, he personally went and cleaned all of it himself so that it would be perfect for presentation. Oh, and if you're curious about why it took so long to find, that would be because it was found at about 7,000 feet below sea level, and there was a lot of grime and such that got onto the vessel and the gold, hence the deep cleaning before it was presented. 
Number 14. British Treasury Ship Gersapa Now, it's not just the United States that have gone and searched for lost vessels carrying important payloads of money all over the place. The British Treasury Ship Gersapa is a great example. Although this one, I can honestly give you a bit of a pass because it's the most basic of reasons. It didn't just sink, it was actually shot down by an enemy ship because the Gersapa was around in 1941 and one night it would try to seek shelter because it was low on fuel. Why was that a bad idea? Well, it's because it eventually ran into a German U-boat and doing what U-boats did best, it fired upon the vessel and sunk it. That meant that its contents, which included 7 million ounces of silver, was lost to the depths. And I do mean the depths. It would be lost to over 13,000 feet below sea level, and in the North Atlantic, no less. That's not the best of spots to find yourself sinking in. Eventually, the group Odyssey Marine Exploration was tasked with finding the vessel and its lost treasure, and it did. The modern value of that said treasure was over $200 million. Talk about the spoils of war. Number 13. Antikythera Shipwreck the Antikythera shipwrecks honestly a very important find in history for various reasons, the least of which was that the shipwreck in question was a Greek vessel from the 1st century BC and that made it very old. It was located near the island of Antikythera, but it was found upon accident. The shipwreck was discovered because of a group of Greek sponge divers. Apparently, they were on their way to Tunisia and realized that they were in trouble because of a storm, so that's when they sought shelter. When they decided to dive down, they found the Greek cargo ship within the depths. After exploring it for themselves, they eventually let the Greek Navy know and over two years of expeditions would be done to mine out the treasure, eventually putting them in Greece's National Archaeological Museum in Athens. But wait, there's more! Later on, the one and only Jacques Cousteau was able to go and film his own expedition of the ship, and when he did, he found even more artifacts than the Greeks. So that's why you leave things to the professionals, kids. Number 12. Half a Century Treasure now, there are a lot of ships that went and ventured out into the world in the age of exploration, especially when trying to trade with India and other Far Eastern countries. As vessels were sailing the open waters, it was the only way of doing things. But for ships like the Esmeralda, their time on the water came to an abrupt end, which is why so many people would go and search for that vessel, not just for its historical element, but of course, for the treasures that it held inside. Fast forward a while and you'll find a group of divers and hunters that looked for the Esmeralda off the coast of Oman. And they did indeed find a 500-year-old ship that they were 90% sure was that vessel. Inside the vessel was much more than you're likely picturing because it featured gold, massive cannonballs, the ship's bell, and a mysterious artifact that couldn't be identified at first. All of this just goes to prove that sometimes you need to go and dive down to find something to see what's there. And that's how some of the best treasures ever have been found at all. Number 11. City of Heraklion This one is a special one for all kinds of reasons, not the least of which is that you all likely picture sunken treasure, like something to be gold or silver or jewels, but for historians and archaeologists, the biggest treasures are the literal pieces of history that were swept away by the waters of the world. And such is the city of Heraklion. Now, if you've never heard of this city, you shouldn't feel bad. It was located in Egypt and was lost over 2,000 years ago. The irony is manyfold here because at one point in time, it was the biggest port city in all of Egypt, making it obviously a place that wasn't just populated, but a major place of commerce for all the nearby nations, and then one day it just simply sunk beneath the waves. But how could a major city like this just get washed away in the literal sense? Well, according to historians, the base of the city was weakened over time by various natural disasters, which included tsunamis, earthquakes, and floods. 
It's suspected that eventually, a massive flood came to Egypt and then sunk the buildings. What was left of the city just wasn't the same as before. After being rediscovered, it was marked off as a historical site, and to this day, more and more treasures from that lost city are being brought up and shown to the world at large. Number 10. The SS Republic now, fine, perhaps you may not like historical treasure, you want some real treasure, I get it. So instead of 2000 years ago, I'll head to a little over 150 years ago. In 1865, the SS Republic sank off the coast of Georgia due to a hurricane. The importance of this ship is multi-layered, not the least of which is because this ship was full of treasure that was meant to become part of the reconstruction after the Civil War. Now, if you don't recall, Reconstruction was meant for the South after it lost the war to help build up the proper relations between the now desegregated, for a while at least, and those who weren't. But the ship sank and was lost for some time, eventually being found 1,700 feet below the water and over 100 miles from Savannah. The search for the ship was a dozen years in the making, so you can understand why they were excited about finally finding it. At the time, it had about $400,000 worth of coins. So if you multiply that by today's standards and compensate for inflation, that's millions of dollars. It almost makes you wonder what would have been done with the money if it had gotten to its destination. What good do you think it would have went towards? Let me know in the comments below. Number 9. RMS Republic now I know it's also a case of two ships that kind of sound the same, but like before, it's different. The letter designations are different as well. The time of its creation and launch, the RMS Republic was a very hyped up ship by ye old standards, mainly because it was apparently the millionaire ship. A ship so extravagant that when it set sail, it was all but assumed that it would be one of many voyages over the next few years. But they were wrong, incredibly wrong, because on their standard route, the ship began to encounter heavy fog, which at the time was particularly bad due to the fact that they didn't have sonar in 1909, and thus they couldn't very easily see where they were going. Surely enough, the ship sank to the depths in shark-infested waters, no less, never to be seen again. That is, until it was. The mystery that surrounds this vessel would last for decades, as many were curious what caused it to sink, and what happened to all that treasure aboard. Now remember, this was a millionaire ship, and thus had all sorts of high-class things in regards to both the ship and its guests. So much so, that the legend stated there was a riches beyond most men's wildest dreams element in that shipwreck. Which in this case, factored out to about seven billion dollars. Number eight, the Belatung Shipwreck. Getting right into it with this one, the Belatung Shipwreck was one that would be found off the coast of Indonesia in 1998. But this is where things get interesting because the vessel itself was said to be a trade ship of sorts where it would transport ceramic on the famous Silk Road. It was going between Oman and China when it sank rather mysteriously. Not the least of which was because where it was when it sank. It was way off the Silk Road and thus should have not been there, thus compounding what actually happened to it. Just as important was the vessel's age, it was a 9th century very rare thing to find, and just as rare were some of the treasures that were aboard, because it had over 60,000 pieces of Tang Dynasty artifacts, which in many ways makes it a priceless find, because it's not exactly something you're supposed to find in the waters of the world. And yet, there it was, and it was a very beloved find when it was salvaged for obvious reasons. Again, it's not something you're likely to find every day, or even every year. Number 7. The Roman City of Baia Oh, what's that? You don't want to hear about another lost city? Well, that's too bad, because you're going to anyways. You'll be more than happy to hear about this one, though, because this city had a certain 
flair to it, meaning that apparently it was called the Las Vegas of its time. No, not because its residents had a bad gambling habit, but rather it was a city full of hedonistic practices. This was the city you went to if you were rich and powerful in Rome and wanted to get all of your whims taken care of, if you know what I mean. Just as important is due to it being built by a volcano, it had multiple healing hot springs that people just love to go and have a good soak in. I guess you could say that it occasionally got hot in those springs, get it? This is where a double dose of irony comes in though, because the city didn't just get sunk at first, first it would be ransacked by an enemy army thus taking the hot spot into a not spot. But wait, there's more, because then nature decided to intervene and raise the water levels to the point where this exotic location is now only exotic because it's underwater. Fast forward to the modern day, and not only was Baia found, it's been turned into a diving archeological site that you can actually visit. Number six, Japan's Atlantis. The legend of Atlantis is one that's steeped in human culture, especially pop culture and for many reasons. The legends of the advanced city being sunk by the waves or perhaps by the gods is a tale that inspires many questions with potential stories. And when a nation loses a city, they commonly refer to it as their Atlantis, and now I'm going to show you Japan's. Just off Yanagunijima and beneath the waves are a variety of stone structures, ones that are believed to be part of an ancient lost city that was sunk near Japan over 2,000 years ago. But while it's said to have been sunk, some are even saying it's a city that was 5,000 years old in terms of origin. The problem though is that even though this find very much is a treasure, it's one that's a little bit controversial, we should say mainly because there's a heavy debate that rages on as to whether the structure is actually man-made or natural. And thus, the research on this lost Atlantis continues on. Whose side do you fall on in the matter? Number five, Lion City. Now this is an actual city of lions, right? I would hope not, because if it's underwater, that means that all the lions are dead. But no, of course not. We're actually heading to China for their version of Atlantis, where we take a look at Lion City and where it once stood. Or more accurately in this case, Xi Chang. It was a city that was known for being a key place of commerce in the eastern province of China once upon a time, but there's a twist. It wasn't a natural disaster that sank the city, it was the actual people. In 1959, the people of China decided that they needed a hydroelectric dam and that they had to flood the place where Xi Chang stood, so that's exactly what they did. For 53 years, people actually forgot about the city until it was rediscovered, and now it's a treasure trove of Chinese history and how people are known to change the landscape. Could you just imagine flooding a city just because you needed to build a dam? It's happened more often than you would think. Number four, the lost city of Dawaraka. Now I'm continuing on with lost cities. You really should stop complaining about it. The reason that the lost city of Dawaraka is on my list is very important because this city may be one of the oldest ones ever made. Because when you hear about the timeline of the ancient cities of the world, the ones that were first built, you hear timelines like 3,000 to 6,000 years ago, which obviously is a very long time. However, with the find of the lost city of Dawaraka off the coast of India, results indicate that this city was potentially created 9 to even 15 thousand years ago, way before the advent of certain histories could even be thought about. The year would be 1988 when the city was found, and as a result, a mighty mystery is on the hands of historians, because they not only need to explain what happened to this city, but what other ancient cities might be out there that literally rewrite the history books. Number three, Santa Margarita. Now I'll bring you back around to shipwrecks. But the joke's on you, it's another Spanish galleon. <laughs> Meet the Santa Margarita, and no, you cannot drink it. 
It's a ship that was not only armed to the teeth, but was the partner to a certain vessel that I talked about earlier, the Nuestra Señora de Atocha. Both of them were loaded with treasures from the New World and meant to help Spain restock its riches in a key moment of history. But like the Señora de Atocha, the Santa Margarita would be lost at sea. But it gets better. Because in terms of treasure, this was the number two ship, and thus carried a wide variety of treasures, which included over 166,000 silver pieces of eight, 587 ingots of silver weighing some 10,000 pounds, and over 9,000 ounces of gold in the form of bars, discs, and bits. That's a lot of treasure and it would be lost until 1980 when it was once again found. Not all the riches were recovered, but a vast amount was. Number two, Nazi gold. Now you may recall that selling any gold related to the Nazis is illegal in a lot of countries due to the heinous acts that the party did. But that doesn't mean that finding their treasures is bad, because it's simply a valuable piece of history. Which in the case of this one makes it all the more a hidden history, because near the end of World War II, many heads of the German army would hide their boxes of gold in Lake Toplitz. And a search to find those gold bars has been going on basically ever since the war would end. There are a lot of factors here to consider, not the least of which is that while this legend is well known, it's not exactly known what was in those gold boxes. So technically, there could be nothing in them, but that hasn't stopped various governments and private companies from going and trying to get it. Number 1. Neapolis now I'm ending with a lost city that was found beneath the waves, known as Neapolis. This time around, we do know what sank the city. It was a massive tsunami that happened around 1700 years ago. And if you don't know, Neapolis was a Roman city, and a large one at that. So you can imagine the impact that it had on the people when they found it to be quite gone. Fast forward to 2010 and a serious expedition would be conducted by various people to try and find the city, but it would take seven years to claim those ruins, and they were indeed discovered in 2017. Not just discovered, but found to be quite intact, to the extent that there were streets that were fully there, as well as tanks where certain fish products were made and stored. It's easy to see why this find matters to so many people, and it'll be curious to see what discoveries continue to be made within it over the years. Can you believe how many vessels went down in the world that had treasure upon them? Does it make you marvel that so many people have found these treasures, and as a result, got rich off of them? And how many more of these treasures are out there in the deep? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.